Canon Collective, welcome to this click feature. And I have photographer Charlene Christie. Hi, Charlene, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks for coming in, like sitting down, because I mean, I want to learn a bit about your photography and I might, if I can, kind of get some ideas of what you do. But yeah. tell us a little bit about what you do and what you regularly photograph. Yeah, so I am a fashion photographer based in Brisbane. I usually photograph fashion, beauty, and runway. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's a bit of a challenge because a lot of people are challenged by shooting people like because it is it yeah. is hard because you don't want to take a bad picture of somebody. No. So you don't. <laughs> when when you're going I mean, what type of gear would you typically take to a shoot? What would you typically use? Yes. At the moment I'm shooting with the five D Mark IV transition to the R six. So How are you sort finding of that transition? Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. I do love the mirrorless. Um, is it the eye tracking? Is that the eye tracking is a big key to it, yes. especially with runway. I just feel like that's such a game changer. Now you're shooting with the, the 5D4 and the R6. Yes. So what type of glass on the front of the cameras? What are you taking out with you? Yes, at the moment I'm shooting mainly with people um, the 24 to 70. And then for runway, I'll shoot with the 70 to 200. Yep. So they're the two lenses from the holy grail of lenses, basically. Yes. So And they work really well. That's why a lot of professional photographers actually go for those lenses because they're very versatile. Very versatile. Um, so at the moment you're using the your EF lenses with converter on the R6? I am. And you're I finding am. that's working great for you? Yeah. Fantastic. Still, still really great. So um, are you going to look at transitioning at some point? Are you looking at getting some RF glass for the for your R6? A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I would love to in the nearby future. Excellent. Yeah. I mean I think the, the mirror system from Canon is a bit of a game changer. Charlene, one of the things we're looking for in the Click Awards in the judging is actually impact that well factor. How do you, you know, when you're kind of going out to create some images, what processes do you do or what do you try and do to get those images like that? You got some type yeah. of system that you use or? Not really. I think um, one or does big your thing, experience help you do that? I, I guess experience does come into play, but I think being very personable with having to work with people. Um, being able to um, to connect with people, understand, and just, I think from the moment that you walk in the door, I think that connection is really key to make people feel comfortable. So communication is a big one? A big one, a big one, especially from the moment um, that you meet someone. Yes. Um, because it, it really does show in the end product um, if someone is uncomfortable, um, especially through the eyes. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I think having that connection with people is very important. And a little bit about your little bit about your backstory. So you studied at uh, Queensland College of Art. I did. Yes. I so, did. and I just remember because I've I've talked to you before about your college days, um, and I know that I think it was it was your second year of college you actually got to shoot in New York Fashion Week. Yes, in my second year. So, yeah. how was that for you? How was that a? I mean, what was the how did that help your photography? Did that was that a big catalyst that really spurred you on? I think so. Um, well, in uni, uh, me and my friend, we we really wanted to go to New York, and that wasn't through my uni. That was something that her and I decided um, to really shove our foot in the door and try and make a difference for ourselves. Um, right place, right time, I guess. Yep. And yeah, I think that really was a catalyst um, to my passion and love for fashion and people yep. um, and really putting yourself out there in an, a whole new country, a whole new Well, it is. Atmosphere. It's really bad. Because how old would you have been at the time? I think I was 21. So that's quite maybe a... Maybe even 22. That's big. Yeah, that's quite a... Putting yourself yep. out there, which is fantastic. Yes. But do you think as a photographer, that's something you really need to do? Put yourself out there? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think connection with people, even knowing people... Um, can really open the doors for um, opportunities that you might have never had if you were to apply for something online. I think, yeah, yeah connection is very important. Because that's what you've done. You've, you've been able to connect with a lot of different um, other photographers yeah. and you've made a lot of connection now with some brands and that type of stuff. So yeah. you've shot for some major brands. We yeah. won't kind of drill into all those things. But, yeah. but people go through your, if they go through your Instagram or your social media, they'll actually see some of the work that you've been doing. Yeah. So one of the things I, 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 that kind of just sticks in my mind that last time I spoke to you was that when you were at college, your lecturer said something to you, said about how many people are going to actually make it as photographers. 
Yeah. And you, and you had a bit of a kind of reaction to that, that you did, that was your kind of your galvanising moment that you were going to make sure that you succeeded. Yeah. Um, so my uni lecturer said, like, look around the room, maybe only one third of you will actually be in the industry. Um, and for me, it, that really stuck with me, that I wanted to be one of those people that's still working in this industry within the next five years. Um, because, yeah, it is, it is a hard industry and it's something that you got to really um, chase after your dreams and really don't just wait for opportunity, but um, go, go find it. Yes, so yeah. that's good, that, uh, and that's good advice because people who want to make it as a photographer, you've got to be, you've got to be drive the driving force behind yourself. You yeah, know, it's not going to come to you. On, I mean, you've obviously worked hard to get to the position where you're in, where yeah. you are, and I mean, and look, sometimes people do get some lucky breaks along the way, and you're at, like you said, right place, right at the right time, that type yeah. of stuff. But you, but but you got on that plane and you put yourself there and you pushed yourself to get to New York. Yeah, to to create that opportunity. So. Is there something that um, something else that you found really helpful when you're shooting people that you could share? Like you think there's something that you find works for you, it mightn't work for everyone, but um, the communication was a great one, but is yeah. there something else? I think um, depending on the level of their experience, whether they're a professional model, um, but I find with this tip is more for amateur um, models or people that have no experience, um, mainly in posing and direction, um, my tip would be just keep moving. Even those little movements, whether it's the head, um, say if they were posing and the head's up slightly, yep. maybe that's not the shot, but if they were to tilt their head slightly down, that can make such a big difference in the end product. So I guess um, just keep moving um, when directing and yeah. So um, like I said, the Click Awards is an exciting opportunity for the Canon Collective. Have you actually entered any awards yourself? I have a couple of years ago, yep. um, the IPA awards. Yep. Yeah, that and was. Had, I mean, did how did you find did that? Did you find that helped your photography, kind of getting some feedback and seeing what you, what other people thought yeah, of your photography. I don't believe I actually got feedback from it, but I think being able to receive feedback from. And that's one of the big. That is one of the yeah. big key points about the Click Awards. With that scorecard, people are going to get feedback. Yes. Um, so all those things we're talking about, like impact and composition and, you know, posing is that kind of, like I said, helps your composition, obviously, if you can pose a model. Yeah. yeah. I think being able to receive feedback and really take that on um, can, yeah, being able to take on constructive criticism is um, so important to, to develop your work and to improve because even myself, I look at my work and yeah, it could be a beautiful image, but there's always different factors that I'm like, oh, maybe next time I can do this a little bit better or this a little bit better. And having those goals to always improve um, makes photography exciting that you don't feel so we, stagnant. We, we never stop learning as photographers, do we? Exactly. Really? The new gear, I mean, there's a lot of talk obviously about mirrorless. Yeah. And we touched on that early in the conversation about the eye tracking. And uh, there's a kind of a bit of a, I know sometimes they say, oh, it's, it's kind of cheating now because people are using the eye tracking. But it's a tool as a photographer you've got to help you do your job better because now you can concentrate more on composition. 100%. So, I yeah. mean, is that how you've actually found you've used the, that technology? Yes, um, especially for a runway yep. because everything happens so fast. Um, it's a pr I call it pressure cooker shooting. Yeah, yeah it, it really is because you can't stop the model on the runway and be like, can you go back and let's reshoot that just because you missed a shot. Um, and, and sometimes, like, I mean, with runway stuff is, is you have got your spots where you've got good light on the model. Yeah. So you've only got that very brief window of opportunity. Moment, yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah, you want to make sure that you got it. So Charlene, some of the things that when you're shooting and you've got your shots back, what are the things that you're looking for in your shots that you think make them really good? So what are the key kind of things that you are looking at? Yeah, I think especially photographing people, um, making sure that their eyes are sharp. Yep. Um, that's a big key factor, um, I guess more for the technical side. Um, making sure that the garment's flattering on the model and um, really positioned in a way that looks um, beautiful. Yes. Um, so you're, mind, you're mindful of the, looking at where the folds are and that type of stuff. And 100%, just, yep. 100%. Um, I guess also hair 
can be a big one yep. sometimes. That can be fixed in editing, but if you can it's get really it in camera. It's really hard when one hair goes across the eye. Yes. It's yes. really annoying when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can fix something in camera, um, rather than thinking, oh, I'll, I'll edit that later, just leave it. Um, yeah. It's always better just to do it on the spot. Um, I think background is a big key factor. I guess as photographers, we're storytellers. So um, if there's a lot of distracting factors in the background, I think sometimes just even as a photographer, being able to move slightly to make the model block that pole or yes. um, that bin in the background. Yeah, um, if it doesn't add to the story, yes. why have it there? Exactly. Yeah. So is, is there anything else you could part, like give to people, um, because a lot of the people in the collective are, um, are up and coming photographers or emerging photographers or you know, passionate amateur photographers. I mean, when you first started photography, I mean, obviously you, you obviously had an interest before you started starting it, but did you find anything that was really useful that got you to the point where you are today? I think just not settling for where I am because I, I do know there's so much room to improve and to grow as a photographer. It's ongoing personal development. It mostly. is, it is. If you can read books, find inspiration other than just... YouTube or yep. um, and that'd be, Instagram. That leads me to a really interesting point to ask you is, where do you go for inspiration? What, what type of things do you look at? I like to, I like to go to art galleries. Um, I like to look at other and, photographers. And, and do you find that going to art galleries and looking at art, that helps with your composition, understanding composition better? Yeah, and colour. Um, a lot to do with... Um, uh, a lot of painters I draw inspiration from because the use of colour is a lot of times very vibrant and beautiful. Yes. And, and in fashion, that's something you've got the with makeup and stuff, you've got yes. the opportunity to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely think I'm drawn to colour in my photography, yeah. whether that's um, the garment or the makeup or um, a little pop here and there. Just um, for me, that's something I'm drawn to and very um, inspired through. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when people look at the photographs, they, they're the things that kind of get people's attention. Charlene, when you on a shoot, where's your starting point for a person? Where do you put them in the frame? Um, I, I would start with a full body shot. And then from there, usually when I do shoot, I don't stop moving as a photographer. So I might start um, in one position and sort of move down, move to the side, sort of um, experiment yes, with yep. um, where I'm standing. Um, and I, I, a lot of the time I find the, um, the model will move with me. So it's sort of like a dance between the photographer and model. <laughs> so if I'm down low, the model um, will it's move. It's kind of moving into frame. Yeah, exactly. And um, interacting with me if I'm um, down there. But I do find I shoot full length, three quarter, and um, a lot of headshots and yep. beauty. You're no stranger to trying to get some innovation in your shots. So can you tell me some of the... I've seen some of your stuff on Instagram and you've got some interesting shots there. Can you tell me some of the things you've had models do to get that kind of a different type of look or a different shot? Yes. Um, I was shooting a beauty shot with lips and um, the makeup artist had a great idea to use silver cake decoration the little the little bauble things you sprinkle on yeah them. yeah okay. and i thought that was such a great idea and i yeah. just said why don't we shove her whole mouth her whole tongue um with this cake decoration um and the model did a bunch of expressions um sticking out her tongue yep. putting it this way putting it that way smiling um that was a lot of fun. So yes. using props that are out of the ordinary. Um, to try and get some originality in the shot. Yeah, something yeah. as simple and inexpensive as cake decorations, maybe $2 from Coles. Yeah. So sometimes you've got to think outside the square when you're, when you're trying to come up with something yeah. new that someone hasn't seen before. Yeah. And that's important too, if, I, you know, to, if you can have a, fo um, a photograph that actually has something new in it, That'll engage someone straight away. They'll look at that picture and go, wow, I haven't seen that before. If you look at the, the, the field that you shoot in the fashion, fashion is about innovation. Yes. You know, every, every season something new comes out. Um, I have to keep coming up with new ideas, new looks yep. to keep people engaged, basically. Yeah. So is there anything else you've done with um, innovative photography or something that you've tried to, to do? Um, lately, I've been sort of dappling in gels. 
Okay. Um, I guess there's so many different ways that you can use gels, yeah. but... For um, people who may not know what gels are, they're over your light source, they're going to give yeah. you a particular colour cast. Yes. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm very drawn to colour, so... Um, any, any gels in particular? Like any particular colours that you kind of gravitating oh, to? I love colours that are on the opposite side of the wheel. So okay. um, purple and um, yellow, I think is really beautiful together. Yeah. Um, sometimes even clashing colours like purple and pink. Um, depends on what you're shooting and how you use those colours. But um, yeah, just and experimenting. that could be the technique that just gives you that extra bit of wow factor. One of the things I think that's going to really help um, photographers in the collective is building their visual literacy and I know that you've got some experience that you were given a book. Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about that and how that book makes you feel and the images in that book and a little bit about it? Yeah so my friend Richard Smith also another photographer. And amazing. Richard's actually known to the collective so people in the collective will actually know yes, who Richard Smith incredible here. photographer. Um, so he was in Paris at the time and bought me a Peter Lindbergh book. Um, I think through receiving that book and seeing something tangible um, rather than digital um, and seeing Peter Lingberg, he's an incredible fashion photographer. Um, yeah, just being so inspired through that. And um, a lot of his work is black and white, which is a l quite different to me. But yes. um, yeah, through that book, you can, you can draw so many different aspects, whether that's the composition, um, the styling, the set, um, he's got quite a few images of like behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, I think through that it's, I've been quite inspired. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think that's a good, it's a worthwhile thing for people in the collective to go out there and whatever in their chosen field of photography, and it could be yeah. wildlife or it could be, you know, whatever it is, look at some of the great masters of that, of those um, areas of photography and look at, so yeah, I suppose you get that understanding of what is a good um, fashion picture so you know now yes. by looking at some of the past masters that when you get that shot on the back of your camera you're going hmm this, is, this one's pretty good I like this one yeah because you've got something to compare it to exactly yeah. even just going to the library and just pulling out a few books um, can make such a big difference in your work when you really do study um, images and really absorb um, a lot of images and really go how did they get there? What is the lighting actually doing? And trying to find that little sparkle in the eye to see, oh, okay, the light's coming from this direction. So that's, how did they try and light that? Yep. Was it from a strip? Was it from an octagon? Um, and trying to see that in the um, model's eye. Um, so There's a lot of clues in the model eye. I've noticed, like I've lo yes. looked a lot of pictures and you can see a lot yeah. of what's happening in the, in the behind the scenes too. Exactly. Yeah. As photographers, we always want to show our subject in the best possible, you know, way. So how do you kind of, you know, people sometimes worry about hands, positioning, that sort of stuff. How do you deal with that? Yes. Yeah. I always tell my models to have soft hands. Um, that's soft rather than... Um, claws? Claws, <laughs> claws. You'd be surprised um, when people are nervous especially. Um, they get a little bit more stiff and jagged and yep. I guess um, you can really see that um, whether that's through the eyes or um, the positioning of people's hands um, and what their hands are doing. Yep. Um, so you're conscious because you've got control of that. Yes. So you're constantly looking at the back of the camera um, where the hands are and where they are. Yeah, in the frame. hands and feet because yep. um, with a the model they want to model head to toe. It's not just um, the top half of them. Yep. They should half be half a foot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it, although it might look beautiful um, from the waist up, but if their feet are doing funny things, they're either crossed in or crossed funny, that isn't so flattering. I yep. think yeah, being being aware of um, feet and hands are a, a big tip I'd give to people that um, are wanting to get better at posing. Just being aware of that. Uh, Click Awards, we have two streams of entry. We have processed and we have edited. So processed is basically captured by the camera, what's captured with very little else changed. Yeah. And then we've got the edited where basically you can um, go in and change stuff. So where In your photography, where do you fit in those um, areas? Yeah, I sort of, I 
sort of sit in both camps, to be honest. Which is actually great, which is fine to do that. Yeah, there's no, there's no wrong in that. Um, it really do, does depend on the image itself. Sometimes I might have um, a bit of a vision to um, edit a lot more, be a yep. little bit more creative, um, and that might suit that one image, but maybe another image doesn't need as much editing. Um, it, it really is um, the preference of the photographer and the and vision of that shot, um, how to really make that come to life. Sometimes that is through editing and sometimes it's not. Yep. Yeah. So what would you say to the collective that it's actually fine to do both, really? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Can... And, and as a photographer, I mean, like we can, we can both you know, sit in both camps. Yeah, and, and there's and enjoy no the wrong benefits that of both, both the thing, the, the pleasure of trying to create something that's, that's captured in camera, that moment we've captured very well, and we've had to do very little with, and the other one where you, like you said you've had, this, you've had this idea and you want to kind of expand on it so yeah. you can actually go off and do that. That's fantastic. Charlene, thank you for coming in and sitting down and sharing some of your knowledge and yes. hopefully passing a few tips on to the collective. Yes, thank um, you for having me. Yeah, look, where could people learn a little bit? They want to learn a bit more about your photography, Charlene Christie. Where, where could they look? Yes, um, you can find me on Instagram on Charlene Christie, yep. um, Charlene underscore Christie, or just through my website, charlenechristie.com. Fantastic. Yeah. Again, thank you for your time. Um, I think look, some of the stuff you've talked about today is going to be so helpful for the collective. And yeah, um, yeah thank you again.